Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Just a quick video, yeah, it should be fairly quick. Let's just see how we go, eh? Uh, just wanted to show you a little bit of increasing the airflow here. Um, so, obviously over the last few decades, I've noticed on vehicles, all the changes, and you know, they do design changes, they make the car look better, then they realize that they've reduced the flow and they need more flow to keep things cool. When you're getting all this extra power and performance out of things, it does create heat. Um, so you need that airflow not just direct to the cooling system to the radiator But you know, you've also got intercoolers and condensers there for the aircon So it all comes down to how well your aircon is going to work um, Your cooling system and also a bit of airflow for the whole engine bay over the engine as well. So um, When you add some modifications for example The ARV bull bars in my opinion, they don't allow for much airflow at all at the end of the day They're pretty well blocked underneath um, fairly blocked at the front. They've got one bar going across the middle. We've demonstrated in other videos. You can go and have a look at one, you know what I mean. And then you've got your number plate mounting which blocks half of that that bar across the front that's open, I don't know, about 40 or 50 mil. Half of that's blocked out with the number plate. So you're left with almost no airflow. So I've always wanted to be able to add a little bit more airflow in there and I looked at this plate underneath and I say, you know what, whether it be this one in the middle here or the side ones, Nothing really hits that. You're driving down a track, it's just dirt, whatever. It's not like you're driving into a forest that's got a metre deep sticks and stones that you've got to bust through. And if you're doing stuff like that, then look, I don't know where you are, because I've never come across those circumstances. Um, this isn't a bash plate, okay? Nothing should touch this. This is kind of your bash plate, and generally not much is going to touch it up here either. It's going to be down underneath these sort of areas here or maybe there. And look, you know, you can see a few scrapes there. That's where things start to hit. I'll suggest that, because some people are concerned, oh, you know, a stick might go through there and hit the radiator or the condenser. Well, firstly, I like to say the chances of it happening are very low. And if you're getting sticks going into there, you're driving in quite dangerous places where you're going to do other damage. Because if you look a little bit lower, and you may or may not see, you probably can't quite see, but look, down here at this level is where your CVs and your boots and things are that could get damaged. So look, you just want to be really careful where you do drive. Like I said, I'm going to keep this one short. This is really easy to swap over. It's a direct replacement for the ARB one. You just take off your bash plate if you've got one there. And um, because this is retained by the same bolts through the bash plate, right? And there's four bolts along the front here. So you get those out. You may need to have to replace the nuts because they're the cage style clip-in nut thingy Duvalakis, we'll call them. They're pretty crap because they get full of dirt and they spin when you go to take them out. So you just replace the M6 bolts here with um, nuts and it's probably wise to use nylocks or put some Loctite on those because they do quite often on outback trips and rough roads, they do um, come loose and I have seen these plates here down wrapped around underneath there. They flatten out pretty well actually. Um, so look, it's a good replacement. It's going to give it a bit more airflow. Um, there's not a lot of holes there anyway, but with the amount of pressure created from forwards driving, it does create a lot of pressure. So it's just going to force air in there because it's just easier to go in there than go past. And this batch boat's pretty cool as well because it's also got some similar sort of holes as well, allowing some airflow to the sump and the bottom of the engine, which the standard bash plates, they do have an allowance for that to cool the oil in the sump is also very important because that oil not only lubricates the engine, it helps to keep things cool as well. So. Like I said, I'm going to keep this one short. I think uh, my battery's about to go flat anyway. I'll say, if you haven't already, subscribe. If you got something out of that and I've earned your subscription, please subscribe. Turn the bell on. Give us a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I'll be looking in the comments um, for uh, ideas on next videos and stuff like that. But this is just one of those little tips where I wanted to show you something that I've been waiting to do for a while. And um, it fits up really well. This is a prototype, okay? A bit of a prototype fitment. I'm going to be providing some feedback back to Kaon because they listen and maybe make some small changes before you get your hands on one so it's even better and um, as we say you know it's a, one of those butter bing butter boom things um, but while the battery hasn't gone flat I'll just mention yeah this plate's really cool because it does allow a bit of airflow some other plates don't do that personally I'd even maybe even add a little bit more to that I might even mention that that's a, that's pretty funky but it doesn't hurt, I'd rather have more airflow. And what does more airflow do? More airflow also saves weight. The more we cut out of these plates, the more weight we save. Now, there's one other thing I want to mention. This plate here, 
it's not super thick. It's probably, I don't know if it's 2 mil or something like that, but this could even be a bit lighter gauge because the lighter it is, the more weight we save. It's not a strength, it's not something that adds strength. As I said, this is not a bash plate. Things don't need to hit this. You know what I mean? It doesn't need to, you know, what's going to hit here? If you're on a paddock or something, you're going to get grass, you know, smashing the front here anyway, and all that's going to go in the holes at the top, which you can probably, if you can see, but, you know, it's not going to, you know, this is going to shave some off, and it might end up in there, but the good news, from the top, when you wash it out, see the sides here, it's open, okay? So you can blow it out with compressed air, and so this is open here, right? Quite open, which is cool, because um, it allows access to get to these uh, toe points here, right? You know, you just got a bit more room around there. Um, I don't know what else I can tell you about it really. That's about it. I think it's pretty cool. I don't know that we're going to actually see any results in numbers um, on the engine coolant temperature. It's going to run about the same. Um, the aircon, we may notice, you know, the aircon working it better. We've noticed in other vehicles where um, dirt and bugs and debris block up the condensers, the aircon efficiency can go down really low. Um, so by cleaning those out makes a big improvement feedback from customers not just what i think uh, so that is cool and by adding this airflow into there you're looking at you i'm nearly touching the condenser these gaps just to give you a bit of info they're only about 10 mil right they're only open about 10 mil so these are cut open and just slightly bent upwards so sticks can't go poking up there right so it is going to be hard for anything to get in there okay but you're looking at your condensers the first thing so you've got that protection Worst case scenario, somehow you manage to get a stick up in there. The first thing it's going to hit is your condenser. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to puncture it anyway. So if you get a stick smaller than 10 mil and it fits through there and it makes it all the way to your condenser, I'll be surprised. The other point I'd like to add is the vehicles with a sovereign bull bar, they're completely open. There's this section about this long, so the sovereign bar say comes down. It's a bit lower, but comes down to about there. So you've got an opening, a fair opening there. And a lot of people have been running around for years and you can look at the condenser between the bull bar and the standard bash plate or the aftermarket bash plate. You can get other plates and that go in between as well, but a lot of people haven't. I can tell you, I see these cars, it's what I look at, and sticks aren't just magically coming up here hitting condensers or radiators. So don't worry about that. You've still got your protection. It's up to you whether you want to upgrade to it or not. I think it's an upgrade. Airflow's everything, and these bull bars really don't allow for that. So I think I've said my point. I hope you get the drift. I think you know what I mean. And um, give us a thumbs up, bada bing, bada boom. Catch you guys, see ya.